Right then. Okay. So you're live. We're live. I'll just give it. A, I'll just like to give it a minute for <laughs> people to just get here and get their brews. Yeah. <clears throat> right. We've got ten watching. So there we go. Right. Good evening. Thank you, Nicola, for just setting that up. Yeah, Nicola's set up the uh, my phone again because. We've turned off the voiceover, so I'm not getting alerted with notifications because the microphone picks it up. Uh, so we've turned it off. So obviously it's in it's in sighted mode now. So you need to be sighted to navigate the phone. So uh, Nicola's done it. Right. So uh, I've got a couple of things to say. Uh, first of all, happy Easter, everybody. I hope you've had a great day despite the isolation and lockdown, and you've made the most of a, a tricky situation so happy Easter uh, and also while I think on also I'd just like to say uh, my uh, well sh share both of our commiserations to Steve Twydell who lost his mother the other day uh, so I'm not going to labour the point but uh, yeah obviously very sad times for Steve uh, and also my uncle Neville had a stroke uh, during the week and uh, he's he's off the critical list, uh, and he's got to have speech therapy and things like that. He's got underlying uh, problems. He's eighty-one years of age. Uh, he's got he's had deep vein thrombosis, and he's got a cardiac condition, uh, and he's just had a, a bleed on his brain. It was quite significant, so it was touch and go. Uh, but he's made a remarkable recovery so uh, the, the downside is my auntie June couldn't get into hospital to visit so the doctors were phoning her up and telling her things uh, they did say let your family know and prepare for the worst uh, but luckily that didn't happen uh, and obviously again we can't go and visit uh, Uncle Neville so thinking of your Uncle Nev and Steve right so oh I've got an itchy nose does that mean anything when you've got an itchy nose? Yeah, yeah, blow it. <laughs> so, uh, right, what we're getting on with? Well, I, I posted before that this is going to be in three parts, this project. Uh, so it's going to be, it might be a, a two-part project, so over two videos, or I may stretch into three, see how we go. Uh, but it's going to be a pedestal with a base, uh, and a cake stand on top so uh, and it's going to be I've got the base and the top platform are going to be cherry and then the center stem is going to be uh, cedar so I, I'm going to turn the base first uh, and then uh, do some carving on it as well uh, from some flutes with a merlin too so there's that I'll be using the speed sizer uh, to mark the mortise of course uh, and a big thank you to everybody that's purchased a speed sizer so far uh, it's it's uh, really appreciated uh, so thank you you've been getting them from Axminster Tools and Machinery and also a huge thank you to everybody that's bought one and uploaded uh, videos uh, and shown how, how you're using your speed sizer so uh, thank you so very much Valerie Gilbert you've done a great video uh, Martin Sabin Smith did a great video yesterday, uh, so that's all well and good. So thank you very very much, uh, and uh, you are a valued member of Team Fisher. So what we're going to do is first of all get my face shield on. I'm going to knock this into shape, and also actually before I crack on, the good thing about me splitting it in, it's Easter Sunday. You know, Nicola and I don't want to be out here because if it would take me for hours to do this project. So I've split it so we can get back in later and maybe listen to a film and I can have a glass of wine. So I've split it up because it is Easter Sunday when I'll send them. Can I just say who's watching? Oh, Avec plays here. Um, Stace Makes. Hi Stace. Wayne the Woodturner. Hi Wayne. Debbie Beardall. Hi up, Debbie. Uh, Karam Hussein. Hi Karam. The Cat and the Fish Crafting. Hello. Toby Clayton. Hi Toby. Uh, David McLernan. Hi Dave. Uh, the Tubby Turner. Um, Hi Tubby. <laughs> uh, 
I'll just oh the blue light turned a dot to D. Hi David. Steve Blinkhorn. Hi Steve. Chris Cox. Cy Smith. Hi Cy Chris. Uh, Jeff Christie. Hi Jeff. Colin Watson. Hi Col. Um, Glyn Senior. Hi Glyn. I think that might be everybody. J H Wood Turning. Hi J. <laughs> Real Ale nine nine nine. That's a good name. Uh, Stuart D Hayes. Yeah. So I hope I've got everybody. If I've missed anybody, yeah. I, I apologise. It's I'm, a long list. I'm, I'm sorry if I've sort of like I said call and things like that. I, I know that I, I, I am not to call Valerie Val. Whoop, uh, so uh, yeah, if I abbreviated your name and you don't like that, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, some people don't like it. Harneal Media. Oh, hi. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thank you to the people that have been buying the speed sizer. Les. Uh, and been saying, <laughs> hi Les, and been saying how great it is. Thank you. That's uh, what uh, I had in mind when I in invented it. Obviously, it's got to be quick and easy and simple for me to use because I am monumentally stupid. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to crack on and I'm not listening to round, uh, and then we can face off and we'll we'll do our thing. So let's get into it. So I'm just going to fit, obviously. Being blind, I have to feel where I'm going to be. That's in the top of Start, stop, feel. noise and this bouncing around whilst I'm knocking the corners off so you just take your time slowly advancing that tool rest really weird you know even though I can feel the tool bouncing on the corners I have no uh, sort of like 100% uh, bona fide idea as to how circular it's getting uh, so I have to stop and feel and there's quite a bow in this board so As I get to that corner there, I can feel the, the shape and the sound changes. So we all know how important the sound is for me. So as I get to this end, the sound changes for me.
Whereas you guys would obviously see the bowl giving it the heebie jeebies like that. So again, have another feel. So obviously. We are not spinning at warp speed because we've got quite a, uh, a decent amount of uh, asymmetry in this. It is not true yet, so it's taking our time. with my cupcakes. All right. Yeah, so Nicola's been doing some Easter baking and uh, she's delivered some to our neighbours. Very nice. So I am listening intently whilst all this is going on. Just a little bit of a, a flat spot there, but nearly there. Toby Clayton says, um, I am so glad to just be watching this live with Chris. I was at the shop fixing my leg and made it just in time. Uh, Chris, you are an inspiration to all wood turners and all wood workers. Thank you, Toby. We appreciate it. Well, Toby got in touch asking when our next live was. I remember your, uh, your question, Toby, so glad you got the... Uh, the response so that's feeling round so very good so what I'm going to do now is just retract the uh, <coughs> the tailstock and live center get my gouge So, drop it a bit more. So, I'm just going to true this face up. Make sure that that doesn't happen at speed. So, there we go. Again, feel for my reference point. There's the bounce. And that sound always reminds me of a, a Huey helicopter.
flap it out. Stop and have a feel. Remember never to reach in. Feel for that sense point. Again, stop, have a feel. I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit now. And I do need to raise that tool rest just a little bit. Easy when you can see. I think we're good enough there now. Chris? Yeah? Question? Yeah? Um, did you turn before you went blind? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. I took it up after going blind because I wanted a vampire steak, which is over there. I've kept it. So. I took up wood turning because I love horror films and Halloween to make that. I took up wood turning to make that. And I listened to YouTube for 600 hours and got all the mental imagery I needed. Bought a lathe and taught myself just by touch. Uh, so, there you go. Um, can you tell Toby what your favourite tool is, please? My favourite tool, uh, well, I love this, I love this bowl gouge with a, uh, a fingernail, really quite a severe fingernail grind on it. Uh, obviously all my custom made tools, my carbide tools, I love. Uh, I love them all. I know it's a, a cliche, but yeah, and I love my... Uh, my spindle gouges as well, I like them. I, I really do love them all uh, because I feel so uh, lucky to be able to be doing what I'm doing, really. So, so I'm just going to measure this now. So if you'd have bought, bought this blank, one sixty zero, pretty much uh, trued up from a shop. We're going to seven and five sixteenths inches. Seven and five sixteenths across. One and thirteen sixteenths inches. One and thirteen sixteenths thick. So that'll turn off in a second. So now we've got that, we can use in five seconds. Uh, this, this, this little fellow that I invented uh, and it was developed and brought into production, uh, production by Axminster Tools and Machinery. So uh, it's going to be this hole over here. Uh, I've got C jaws on. So basically, you just find your centre 
hold it in place and now it's not clamped tight because it, it, you need that just to be able to free spin. So I can locate that with that little label. It's got a, a voice message on but also uh, that, that label makes it just tactile as well. So I'm just going to put a score line on there. Whereas you guys would use a pencil. So there's your score line. I can feel that. So again, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's the, uh, the blind wood turner and Axminster tool speed sizer. Uh, and it helps you quickly locate uh, and mark the correct size, which is very important, of uh, diameter for your mortises and tenons. So. I'm going to get my parking tool now. I need to lift the tail rest, uh, tool rest, tail rest. What Paul Smith says he's got to get one of those sounds an amazing bit of kit designed from a blind person to help a blind person. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was it was invented by me for me, but very quickly, especially after I've gone from the wooden disc to the first prototype, which is a Pringle lid with a with the holes in it. I quickly knew that this would be a great idea for everybody and that's when I got in touch with our friends at Axminster and said, uh, what a great idea guys and they went, yeah, we're loving that. Uh, so that was the start of the, the story really. Obviously what I've done there is marked my position and then obviously you can if you want, like Mark did yesterday on this video, use the parting tool uh, to go all the way across but I'll use my square carbide cutter. They say necessity is the in, uh, mother of invention, so you know I had a need uh, and invented something. So So again, you know, you can I'll probably make that a little bit deeper. So wait till that stops completely. Wonderful. Now obviously this is going to be the base of the bottom of the pedestal. Uh, so this is the base of the base. So I want this relatively flat but just with a little bit of an undercut. Uh, just so she sits nice and flat. So... 
again, let's just feel. If you are using traditional gouges, uh, remember, keep the handle down. It's a very, very light cut here. So I can just feel that there now dipping. Is wonderful. Paul Smith says, can you not design more things to help blind people? Oh, you never know. <laughs> I might have started something there. Yeah? Might have started something. Well, it's a great idea, Paul. So I'm just going to tidy this up now with the scraper. A very very gentle cut, straight even. Just to find that. Good. Quickly says he recently made himself a rod tool rest like yours. Makes turning so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. The round bar ones. Um, Les says, is the speed size only for Axminster or is it a universal setter? Well, it's universal. Universal, obviously because it's been developed by Axminster and Axminster have their own range of chucks and jaws out, this horizontal line that looks like braille, that's all of the Axminster jaws there. But this line, which is marked in millimetres, out to, uh, I think it's 100 mil, sure, 90 or 100 mil, uh, use one of these and there'll be one of these that's getting you to the right place for your jaws. Uh, um, ten, yeah, 10 to 100. Yeah. So, yeah, out to 100 mil, so that's even going for big jaws. So just use that perfectly straight line for aftermarket. That's not to say that there isn't a, a hole intended for an Axminster jaw that wouldn't fit another brand you know the chances are but if not to make it easy just if you've got a different brand use these holes so once you know that hole 60 gives you the optimum safe opening or closing you just always use that hole uh bippity boppity boo as sheldon cooper says on the big band <laughs> uh there you go no more measuring or fiddling around with bits of wood or measuring sticks or uh, calipers and dividers and potentially getting a bit of a nasty catch or a dig in all that's just taken away so obviously i i did it with the laid spinning but it's perfectly fine, you just put your pencil in if you're sighted and just rotate it by hand. Just do that, job done. Just do that little centre pit there. So that's great. What I'm going to do now is uh, sand this.
Do you know if anyone has made a moisture meter that speaks so a blind person could use it? Not that I know of. Uh, uh, no, I'm certain there isn't. Uh, Valerie says, it's absolutely brilliant, it saves me so much time. Um, Colin says his speed sizer arrived yesterday. He's identified the relevant holes for most of his jaws, only one set that doesn't match identically. Debbie's ordered one, hopefully it'll be here soon. Okay. But, you know, it's, you know, if there's what, not one that matches up exactly perfect, go to the, especially the ones that go from 10 to 100, you know, go to the next one. You know, opening wider. Obviously, you don't want to be going, you know, uh, smaller. Go to the next one because you're only talking a few mil differences. The problem that arises when it becomes a safety issue, and a lot of people are guilty of it, is when the jaws, you know, between each jaw, there's, you know, a huge gap. So just having to open it a few extra millimeters, you know, isn't a game changer. I'd just go to the next hole, uh, you know, and then you've got a hole. You know, for, for most part, yeah, we want it as accurate as it can be. But uh, if you just went to the next biggest hole, that'd be cool. So I'm just getting some. Lubricant on there. Low. Get this sanded up now. So this is gonna just help keep the dust down. David said, is that instead of Yorkshire grit? No, I'll use that as well, David. David says, what is it you're using? It's, uh, it's a mixture of beeswax uh, and uh, lemon oil, a bit of lavender oil in it, uh, some mineral oil. So it smells amazing. But it just helps lubricate your work. Uh, it's good if you've got some punky wood. But it helps lubricate things to keep the dust down. Uh, it helps give a really nice finish. 
what you do remove it all in the sanding process but it forms a slurry it just keeps the dust down a bit more and it smells amazing David says, is it homemade or a bought product? This is homemade. Wagger Potter made it for me. Dave Webber says, so a bit like wet sanding with water, only it smells better. Yeah. Like wet sanding indeed. And it's, uh, you know, all this is clumping up a lot, uh, a lot thicker, the clumps. And you can use it if you're power sanding as well. Just use a wire brush to clean out your pads. Does it not gum up the sandpaper faster than the dry sand? Yes, it does. That's the downside. But uh, at least it, it forces you to move to a fresh piece of the paper uh, more frequently. So you, you're having a very efficient cut. Uh, like I say, if you're doing using the uh, either the self-propelled bowl sanders or the... Uh, Power, power sanding with a drill, you can clean it out uh, so your disc will last longer. But uh, it really does, because if I had my dust extractor on, you know, which is loud, you wouldn't hear me. Uh, so, um, Wood Turning with Nathan. So Hi, Nathan. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Happy Easter. I'm all right, mate. How are you doing, pal? And how's your granddad? Yeah, big shout out to Nathan, he's a big favourite of ours, a, uh, a very cheeky uh, 
lad, we love him. Uh, he's a disabled blood turner. Don't mind me saying Nathan. Uh, he's got cerebral palsy, uh, but a cracking little wood turner. Uh, he's got a, he's got a great future ahead of him. Uh, yeah, Nathan and his granddad just turn up out of the blue. Uh, and always cheer us up. Don't we, Nicola? Yeah. Yeah. It's always really good to see them both. As it is, all our friends. He says good, thanks, Chris. That's good. And I'm not even going to charge you for that shout out. <laughs> That's feeling nice and smooth. He says you're his inspiration. Thanks, pal. You're a hero. You're a legend, you are. So I'm going to put my obligatory spiral in the base. And because I've come away, let's just feel where I need to be again. Do a bit of an angle one. <laughs> doing there was just counting internally to five. Sorry. It's Sounds like Nicola's rearranging the furniture. Chris Nunn says hi Chris. Baz says alright everyone. Hi Chris, hi Baz. Cat and the Fish Crafting says um, I just get so much life inspiration when I watch your videos. Thank you very much, that's kind, that's good. That's why we're doing it. David says he's got to bid us all a good evening and we'll have to watch the video later or tomorrow. Is that David who? Uh, Julie. Bye David, love to Tava. Uh, our friends from Denmark. Jutland, Denmark. So, I'm going to get some sanding sealer action going now. I actually got a little bit on the cloth then. I missed. That would be nice. having a blind moment. So make sure it's rubbed in all over. And it'll flash off very quickly. Just up the speed a bit. It's a bit of nigh web this, or Scotch Bright, whatever you want to call it. Or a posh pan scrubber. Two coats of sanding sealer. Way before I lock it on the floor. Of 
quick bean nibbing and I can get my hands in there and have a feel. I know I'm not going to get injured because the tool rest is backed well out of the way. Right, I'm going to get the Yorkshire grit. The original. I've said it before but I'm going to say it again, they smell differently so even though they're in the same pot I don't need a talking label because they smell differently. Um, Dave Webber said if it wasn't for messing up the audio would you just be doing the sanding dry with the dust collection going? No, I'd still use it wet, I'd have the, I'd have the dust extraction on, I'd still be using that paste wax and I'd also have my power cap on, which is the powered uh, face shield with the built-in respirator. So I'd be doing all of that. But again, you know, when I'm demonstrating, you can't do, you know, all of the fancy dust extraction stuff because the people in the audience can't hear you. So this is the original Yorkshire grit, making sure it's all worked in. Again, I can feel it under my fingertips and it's audibly different the sound at the start until it gets worked in and I can hear the sound diminishing and the feeling under my fingers changing so I can tell when it's all worked in you don't put a huge glob into that sense if you're going to put some nice detail some texture on your pieces don't put a huge glob because uh, you'll just end up having to pick it out later and it, you know it'll just clog everything up so you just use a little bit that's left on your tissue again up the speed of it now you need to make sure this is all worked in make sure it's done its job and then it's all removed ready for the microfine which is the next step do you thin your sanding seal it out uh, only, only a little bit, yeah. So that's the original. The gold with the microfine now. So this has got sort of like a, a runny, a thinner consistency. So you don't need as much. So this has aluminium oxide in. So we'll just start nice and slow. It's going to prevent any fling off. And just get it worked in. Let me speed a little bit already now. And now we can give that a bit of a, a kiss on the inside. Speed. Up the speed again now, move to a clean part of tissue, clean part of the tissue. speed again. I'm supporting the right hand here to stop it getting flung around. And stop that and now I'm going to polish it with friction polish which is shellac based. Only a couple of drops needed of this stuff. I'm going to apply two coats. Glenn says, how did you know what's in it? What? Oh, I guess it's Yorkshire Grit. How did I know what's in the Yorkshire Grit? Yeah. Oh, God. Someone must have told me at some point.
So just a couple of drops of friction polish and light pressure. Microfining is that what you're Oh, the microfine. Someone must have told me. <coughs> And that should do. So that's the base done. Very simple. He says that's the last time he lets you get him drunk. Was him that told me. No one else would have told me. <laughs> Maybe it's top secret. Well, they shouldn't have bloody told me that. <laughs> I did ask him something once and he went, can't tell you. When he was here, actually, when Sophie was here. Oh, right. And he said, oh, can't tell you. But it wasn't like what's... I knew there was aluminium oxide in it, but I was sort of like fishing for what else is in it. He's like, yeah, tell me. I'm not going to start making it myself. But it wouldn't. He's a tricky little camper. Oh, he says it used to be, lol. Oh, it used to be? Yeah, maybe right. it's not anymore. I'm, I'm certain it was you. Well, if you changed it, what's in it now? <laughs> <laughs> you have to change your script when you're doing demo. Right? I know. We used to have, what was it? Aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide. No, it has something else. Yes. Is it just a blend of herbs and spices? It blend? says top secret. Oh, I bet it is. <laughs> top secret or not, I've nearly run out. <laughs> <laughs> That's subtle. <laughs> yeah, nearly run out. So I've removed uh, the face plate. So I'm going to put the the chuck on there. He said it's in the post. Yeah. Cheers, pal. Mr. Tact, he's called you. Mr. Tact. <laughs> In fact, uh, you gave me a pot, and a thousand thanks, you gave me a pot of original at Harrogate, so I'm okay for that, Glyn, but if you could get me some microfine out, uh, I shall continue to uh, use it and sing its praises at demos when they start up again. <laughs> So I'm just locking the little uh, set screws there. Just get this locked down onto the spindle so it's nice and safe for me. So I'm just cleaning inside of the jaws. So obviously more wobble on the front here. Just nip these up nice and gently. Don't want to over tighten them. Yeah, so the back end running nice and true. There's no wobble or anything there. Just start her up out of the way and obviously what I need to do is uh, just face this off before it gets started.
for which I will be putting my face shield back on. Again, that little hole that I put in there to mark out before comes in very handy for me. There's a tactile reference point. So again, feel for where I need to be. Don't let your tool rest hit your work. to do is just come in where it feel where the screw hole is just let that tool rest up a little bit drop the speed down And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the tail stock on uh, and put the drill chuck on and I'll drill the hole there ready to receive the tenon when I do the stem. So. Let's remove this live centre. Cherry. 
So this doesn't need to be a super deep hole. Probably the depth of the head, twice the depth of the head. Nice and slow, and I just keep my hand over the over the chuck and the quill, just in case it wants to try and spin free. So I'm going to stop there and have a feel how deep I've gone in. Right, so the head is just about to disappear. So. that's probably enough that's plenty so when I do the stem and I've got an inch this is a 25 mil forcing of it by the way I'll put an inch tenon uh, and then I'll do it a bit oversized lengthwise and then I'll just trim off until it, it fits in there nice and flush but that's done just be careful especially uh, if you're new to wood turning, that's going to be incredibly hot now. Don't touch it, and certainly wouldn't put it anywhere. Critical, I just like to put it on the concrete floor, uh, and it can just cool down now. Are we on Nicola, please? Um, Just check the integrity of the. Half past eight. Half past eight, okay. That feels fine, nice and tight. a bit of extra wiggle room. Just like to give myself a bit of extra room when I can. Just drop that down a bit. Sneak up on that. So I'm, I'm constantly doing things to feel what's going on. What I'll do is I'll just nip this corner off here now. Get that face shield a bit further down.
watch that feel. So the mental imagery is changing all the time in my head. Uh, so I'm getting an idea now as to what sort of shape I want this to be. Keep on thinning the sides down as well. And obviously where the screw holes were. still feel the screw holes that's cool you have to factor and think about all of this whilst you're working basically shaping at the minute, not doing any fine finesse cuts or shear cuts, I'm just shaping. That's all we're doing, adding some shape. vibration and that's from the screw hole and I can feel the vibration from the screw holes but again this is all anticipated because otherwise this would have been a way too thun clunky base we want it quite elegant uh, so Do you have a finished version of the cake stand to go? Do I have a finished version of the cake stand or are you going to make us wait and see what it turns out like? Oh no, you've got to come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the week after. Oh no, this is the first time I've ever done one. <laughs> first time. Uh, no, it's. Uh, I just thought I'd, I'd do something different. Do you know what I'll have to, I'll have to do when you've done it? 
Did you say this was cherry? Yeah. It's cherry. Cherry old baby. Toby says, Chris, do a live show every day, please. <laughs> Toby. Like that. Now, is it a hard or soft wood? Has it got a crack? Yeah. Oh. That's where the noise and the vibration has been coming from. So, Obviously, when you get a bit of a split like that, uh, it's prudent to get some glue in it. So the quickest way, certainly for me, is to just to remove the chuck from the spindle and I can just put the whole kit and caboodle back on Cherry, it'll be a hardwood won't it? Cherry's a hardwood, yeah So this, I don't know if it's picking it up I think the camera's here, but yes. there's a split So Toby says, are you filling the crack with CA glue? Yes, sir. So I have to feel for the crack now. Just throw the activator all over the place. So... Wearing half of it. Like you smock. Yeah. So I can feel the crack there running along. So I'll put some CA glue there and just rubbing some dust in it. <coughs> Takes your breath away. Well, it's still the glue. Yeah, it's quite pungent once it gets going. 
once it starts going through that exothermic reaction. Baz says maybe another UFO. Yeah. Um, Eva says, is there glue that's suitable for food safe things? Uh, I'm guessing CA glue would be food safe because once it's set up and cured, it really just becomes plastic, acrylic, really. So I'm guessing it'd be food safe, but uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't ever hold up to uh, you know, washing, immersion, you know, it'd just be a damp cloth and things like that. So, there you go. Yeah. So, that should at least stop it blowing apart on the lathe. Um, si Smith says, what's your favourite wood to work with? Not cherry. <laughs> uh, I've turned... Well, I like so many for different reasons. You know, I like turning sycamore and lime because it's really forgiving and you can do something so quickly with it. Uh, and sycamore and lime uh, are, are great for power carving and things. I like ash and oak because they can be tough and put up a fight, so that can be pretty cool. Uh, Wayne says PVA glue is used on chopping boards. PVA glue? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds very good. So I'm just keeping the food relatively. So he says he thinks the crack goes on the edge. The cracks what? Showing on the edge, Les says. Let's feel it. <laughs> Tiny little bit there. But I think it's probably just leaked into that. Hopefully. So what I was doing there was I'm just kissing the outer rim because I because I can't see it I can feel it through the tool. So it's a good gauge of stability for me. Well, it's only that one crack.
Squaring the side up with the parting tool. It's getting windy, definitely getting windy. Yeah, I think it's going to rain. Stay safe. Is there something you've always wanted to turn but you're too scared to try, if that makes sense? Uh, I'm not scared of anything, uh, but, you know, uh, deep hollowing, you know, uh, is something that, I'd, you know, is probably inherently dangerous. But I want to do a, a master class with Phil Irons uh, and use the uh, Proform hollowing system. Uh, so I'm not scared of it. Obviously, I'll be a bit anxious the first time, but it's not like I'm not scared. Uh, I'm from Salford, Stacey. Scared of now. <laughs> So. Itinerary. Um, do you also use your nose, smelling how deep far you are? I use everything. Uh, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm smelling, I'm feeling, I'm listening, I'm sensing. Uh, Yeah, all of the above, really. So I'm going to get a bit more CA in that and then I'm going to give it a, a, a rudimentary sanding uh, because I am going to power carve it. Again, just feel for that. Um, Toby says, have you ever turned a piece with resin or epoxy? Uh, well, I've turned obviously pen blanks. Uh, I haven't really done much hybrid turning. Uh, I haven't got the it's not like the setup to be doing it. Uh, not to say I, I wouldn't, but at the moment, and it's something. It's like I've said to Nicola Toby. You know, a lot of people said, "Oh, have you done this and do that." You know, I would, the whole resin thing, yeah, I, I suppose it's interesting and things like that. But I've turned resin and, you know, uh, when Joe Kirchmer was here, you know, I taught him how to turn and he turned that resin uh, sort of like a shot glass holder. But... It just, you know, the resin with all the fancy colours and the designs. Uh, I can turn resin, yeah, it's no, no different really for me. Uh, and I've turned, you know, thousands of bloody pens and hundreds of resin pens. It's just something that is wasted on me. That's why I do texturing a lot. Because it's tactile and sensory for me with being blind. Doing weird and wonderful resin colours. You know, it's all embedded really within the resin, so it's of no use to me. Uh, 
if you sort of get what I mean. Um, Toby says he's attempting to make a chest set. Any suggestions for wood type? Well, obviously you want contrasting colours for the boards and the pieces. Uh, so I reckon for the actual board itself, you could go with teak and oak, you know, slightly different, or you could go, you know, ebony and sycamore, really, you know, you've got that black and white, and obviously your pieces need to be contrasting, but that's not to say you couldn't do, you know, really weird and wacky colours as well if you wanted you know, you could do red and blue or whatever. But if you're talking traditional woods, I think it'd be pretty cool to... I think it'd look really smart with something like ebony or lead wood and then a really white white, a maple or a lime. What time is it, Nicola, please? Five to nine. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm going to go, we'll work till half nine, Nicola, okay? Okay. Then we'll stop and we can go and have a drink and watch a bit of telly. So, I'm going to start power carving. So. So, obviously we've got a nice... A nice shaped base there and we've got the little post which will have the I've unplugged the lathe I've locked the spindle I'm gonna put the power cap on um, Axminster Demo was a resin bowl with wood. Mr. Colwyn, he gave you a shout out on the visor. All right. Good. <laughs> Cy says he's already had a drink. <laughs> good. Well done, Simon. Happy Easter. <laughs> right. So, hold on. Obviously, this lathe has an indexing system. Uh, no good to me, although I can tell by feel. You know, it's obviously it's locked in there, and then there's the second one, and there's the third one, all the way around 24 times. But what I'm going to do now is just, again, so it's sort of like a bit, a bit organic. Uh, I'm going to start as best I can at the 12 o'clock position, and then I'll move it round just by touch to quarter past and then half past then quarter two or north east south west and then bisect them so look as see as where it needs to be Okay. 
turn that around. So it's back to my little quarter pass for the fish. I'm still here, folks. chat there now so you can see how I'm doing it and now what I need to do is bisect these as well again so that's what you know by moving around gradually points of the compass and having a feel and I'm listening uh, and even with the power cap on I can hear it uh, yeah so we'll carry on Fred's wondering if you always get your fingers out of the way in time uh, yeah I do now I caught my thumb a couple of times when I first started using them.
So, turn that off. I'm sorry for not. I'm sorry for not speaking, but we're just concentrating there. So, obviously, what I can do is I can just tidy. If there's some that I haven't got quite as far in, uh, I could either tidy it up with the gouge, or just continue. Uh, but. They're going to be pretty much spot on because I can tell by the muscle memory. I just feel that crack still there. Flaming Turner says, We know Chris could see the smoke coming from your ears. <laughs> Yeah, was it much show concentration there, having to go round uh, and feel and feel. Remember not to keep your fingers there, and then go in and you know burn yourself. So feel, feel, get my position, move the hands out, and then do the cut. That's pretty cool. So right, so the next step now is what I'm going to do is just remove this again. And that the uh, the vibration from the Merlin has just either opened up that split a little bit more or because I've plunged in, I've actually gone deeper than the glue had penetrated. So it's just it's not opened it up again, it always was there, and I've just got deeper into the, the, the crack, the fissure. Not like me, <laughs> F I W -S. S. <laughs> As in a geological fissure. So, so, obviously, you know, this is the sort of look that we're going for. So. And I like putting the chuck in there because it angles it towards me, so it's not going to. Well, it's going to hopefully prevent the glue. Uh, so these are all obviously running repairs. Got some fine dust there left over from the Merlin. So I wonder what uh, Colwyn said about us 
by the speed sizer. We don't know, we have to watch it, won't we? I think, it, did you say, is it on Facebook's side? I think did you it, say? Yeah, I think they've done them on Axminster's Facebook page. Yeah, okay. Just got some fine dust in there. So remember, hold your work and spin your hand wheel. And then it'll prevent you from chucking it on the floor. So what I need to do now is get the 3M Roll Lock abrasive bristle brush on and we can tidy this up. Get rid of the harsh edges. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I, you know, we need to just hand sand possibly a little bit in the actual flutes and then I can even do the engraving uh, on these that I like, that, that, that uh, technique. So I, what do you guys think? I just do not do any of the percussive engraving or do you want me to do that during the week and then when you come back next Sunday? Uh, this piece will be finished and engraved uh, and then we can crack on with doing the centre stem uh, or just you want to see me do some percussive engraving uh, I'll tidy up to you what do you want me to do? do you want to come next week and it's been uh, stippled I'll be back in a sec, hold on. Is there anybody there? I'm just having a look, there's sort of been um, quite a few comments. Uh, you can just go live tomorrow for us, thank you, said Toby. He's a trier, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> God love you, Toby. Uh, the time 16 is only doing Tuesday night live. Oh, right, okay. So, is the beer time 16, is that the only one he's doing? The only um, video? I'm having a proper blind moment here. Uh, a blind moment of epic proportion. Oh, I've sorted it now. Flipping heck. That was monumentally rubbish. Right, so the Merlin, it doesn't have the locking nut here anymore for the spindle, so it comes with a flange gripper rooney. So it just holds the, uh, the spindle in place. So it's got a 3M roll lock, abrasive bristle. Double overhead cam, 16 valve, uh, bristle brush. Mm -hmm. And off we go!
So what I like to do now is just give uh, give some hand work now. That sounds very bad, sorry. Get a hand work. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. Sometimes you just can't beat some hand finishing. Power to the lathe is off. See the sound's different for me there, so that's obviously where that some of that glue has been. And now, as I've broken through the surface of that glue, you get that very pungent, take the back of your throat, hit, flavour. Would it be an option to texture over power carving, or is that too dangerous? Sorry? Would it be an option to texture over power carving, or is that too dangerous? No, well, it won't be spinning. Now, it'd be hand. Oh, you mean with the texturing tool? I don't know. It's what Baz is asking. Oh, Baz, yeah. Right, yeah, it might get a catch or it might just dig in. Uh, but when you give it a go, Baz, let us know how you got on it. <laughs> so. Top corner there now. It's sort of coming together now as to the you know like the picture I've got in my mind, so it's happy days. Right, so I'm going to go around now with some, that was 120, so I'll go around now with a piece of 240. in there. Thank you. 
Right. So, let's go to that. Is that the light there? That should be back on. So, what I'm going to do now is just spin her up and give it a hand sanding, but carefully. So what do you think so far? What do you think so far? They're just sorting out everybody's demos on the calendar. Oh, are they? Yeah. I'm just updating the calendar. Uh, Evil says it looks great. Toby says absolutely awesome. David McLernan says, cool piece, Chris. Uh, Flame Eternal looks good, Chris. Steve Coombs looks great, Chris. Jeff Christie looking good, Chris. Brilliant, Chris, says Valerie. Uh, Nathan says, it's gorgeous, Chris. But you, you see how easy it is, really? I mean, it's second me time because I can't see. But... Technically, you know, it's not difficult. We've, we, you know, we've lost 20 minutes trying to fill cracks. Si likes it, but he'd like more carving. JH Wood Turning says looks amazing. Well, Colin says looks great and you've still got all your fingers. Yeah. So, Tiny Turner says she thinks it's going to be freaking cool. Cheers, Emma. TQ Blank says looks really good. So, obviously now what I need to do is by feel, start doing the engraving. So, Sai said, yeah, he'd love more carving. That's, that's easy, yeah, when you can see and, you know, it's like getting really intricate then, but yeah. Uh, but this little uh, touch now... It's a noisy little rascal, but uh, it's not dangerous. So I just touched the, not the very tip, but you know, touch it. So uh, as I'm going along, I can feel the edge, and also I'm holding the finger in place as a guide.
Coon says, I love watching you work, Chris, but if you really want to impress us, try doing it with your eyes closed. <laughs> Yeah. How's that? You happy? <laughs> mm. Yo, Coomstick, you better be really impressed now after I've done that. <laughs> Oh, God, yes. Yeah, the, you see, the thing is, me closing the eyes makes no difference as to what I perceive, but it doesn't feel natural to close my eyes. <laughs> anyway. We've got an LMAO from Steve. Yeah, so obviously if this was a Dremel or a rotary tool, I couldn't hold my fingers there and just slice them to bits. So that's why I prefer this. get the idea anyway guys so obviously I think it will be best if I do this uh, and finish this piece uh, probably tomorrow uh, and I'll post Instagram photos anyway uh, but when we come back next Sunday we can do the center spindle so this will all be uh, engraved because it does take a long long time for me Oh no! Obviously you can tell the fact that my tongue has come out. I'll, I always do that when I'm concentrating. Stick the tongue out.
Half past nine. Half past nine. Yeah. Right, so uh, as I said folks, we're, I'm going to uh, call it a night now and I shall carry on with this uh, engraving tomorrow and uh, I'll post pictures on Instagram so when we reconvene next Sunday uh, we can move on to the next step. Uh, so there you go, so slowly working round applying this texture. Coming along nicely. Okay. So we shall call that a night. And then like I say we shall keep in touch throughout the week and then next Sunday, 7 30 pm UK time for another live. So there's plenty of YouTubers and wood turners doing live stuff. Yeah, uh, I shared the calendar. Yeah, well that's cool. Uh, lots of wood turners and YouTubers and makers from all over the world doing their bit to keep spirits up and morale up uh, during the isolation and lockdown. So uh, that's it. So until we catch up again. Enjoy the rest of the Easter Sunday. You've all earned a drink. Uh, so, that's it. Anything to say, Nicola? No, that's it. Um, we'll be back um, tomorrow, won't we? At home um, with the fishes. Yes. But, yeah, enjoy your Easter eggs. And um, Chris will be back doing this same time next week. But I'll Instagram the progress with this. Uh, tomorrow yeah all right folks so thank you so very much thank you everyone thank you for all the love that you've been sharing with the speed sizer and if you haven't got one yet get one <laughs> it's a game changer <laughs> it'll make life safer easier and more enjoyable for you uh, it's just one less fiddly little thing to worry about uh, so thank you very much big love to everyone uh, and bye bye <laughs>